Hey, what's going on, guys? What is up today? Good morning, good evening, depending on where you are in the world. It's morning time where I'm at. And um, I got on my uh, my Thai New Year shirt. Decided to wear that in honor of my birthday week since I'm a little late. Usually I do the lives a little bit earlier in the week. Just decided to go live today. Why not? Why not share information? Um, I know it's a lot of people in the group that um, have been asking about funding for their business, either they're looking for funding for their business, or a lot of people in the group are to the point where you can actually fund businesses and you want to add that to your wealth portfolio. And so I wanted to talk about that topic. In this group, we have five different topics that we really talk about as far as creating a freedom lifestyle through investing and through becoming an entrepreneur. And those are personal development, which is the first one. We haven't talked about that topic. We'll talk about it next which is basically the, the foundation. That's the cornerstone of you starting to create a freedom lifestyle or starting to uh, expand your, your freedom lifestyle to where you want to go. So definitely personal development is the first one. Then we have real estate. We have uh, trading currencies or buying and uh, holding currencies. And we also have um, funding your own business. So having your own business that you're starting, starting it online, or you can have uh, like physical brick and mortar businesses. And then we also have... Um, investing into other people's businesses and so at that point you have the funds in order to be able to lend your money and be able to get a return on your money by you not actually doing any work you just um, going on for somebody else's idea and that way you can spread yourself as wide or as deep as you want to go um, when it comes to actually having businesses you don't have to do the work to to build them all so that's the that's the last one so out of those five was that five that I'm, I don't think I missed out on any of them. But out of those five, those are like a stable foundation for you to have all of them working at one time. And so you're not going to start them all at one time. I, I wouldn't recommend that. I recommend you start somewhere with one of them and then expand and immediately go to the next one. So that way it doesn't matter what happens in the economy. If, if one niche is, is falling down on the scale, which everything has a cycle, everything has a hot time, things go up and down. And so when you have these five things in place, then you'll be able to be stable regardless of what happens outside of yourself. Your family economy will always be good when you have these five skills that you have. And then even if something happens with your company with these skills or your business, you have these skills to be able to rebuild all the time. And so it's worth it. A lot of people come and they'll say, you know, these things take too long to build. But if you look at yourself five years ago or 10 years ago, if you would have had these skills prior, these skills prior to that time, then you know you wouldn't have been saying that it took too long. Like these things last for a lifetime, and the more the better that you get at it, the more money and the more freedom of a lifestyle you'll be able to create. And so it doesn't matter about the time frame of these things. Don't even think about time when it comes down to learning this information and learning these skills. Generally, what you really want to do is just stick and make a commitment that you're going to learn it that you're going to have it, that you're going to possess it, and then just go through every day and just show up every single day, just show up to learning it, show up to getting better, show up to succeeding and prospering with these things, and then slowly but surely you'll be able to add them on. So I'm along with the process with you. Me and Ash is along with the process. This, is, this, is, this isn't things that we're just talking about or just wishing that we're doing, and we haven't accomplished all of them to the point where we feel like we've mastered them all. So we're along the journey with you guys when it comes down to learning one of these things and then moving on to the next one and then moving on to the next one and then master them, mastering them as we go along. So I'm along with the journey. And so I was telling you guys, I'm wearing this shirt because in Thailand, they had New Year's here last week. And New Year's was for a whole week. It's crazy how um, the whole country celebrated New Year's um, at one time. And then they separated and had different cities celebrate New Year's at one time. And people traveled to those cities to celebrate New Year's in those areas. And so New, New Year's was kind of stretched out for a whole week. And it just happened to be my birthday week that it was um, happening. And so I really didn't have to plan anything for my birthday. I really just kind of went outside and just experienced the New Year's. And they wear shirts like this. I would never like choose to wear a shirt like this. This isn't something that's in my wardrobe or anything. But this is the shirts, the kind of shirts that they wore. And it was all different types of colors. You can choose all different types of patterns. But mainly, it's kind of like Hawaiian or tropical. And basically, all day what they did was throw water on everybody that they saw. And so... Um, and it wasn't as much in the mornings because people was going to work in the mornings. I felt that was pretty cool for them to be able to respect that. But once it got down to the late afternoon and the evenings and the evening times, it was just basically no space for you to walk. Like it's just people everywhere dancing, partying. Everybody got water guns or buckets or huge buckets of water. They'll put ice in the water or, or chill the water. 
And sometimes, you know, those those times weren't fun. Like when the water was super cold and they were throwing it on us, that that wasn't the funnest part of the of, of what was happening. But it didn't matter if you were riding on the bus, if you were on a motorcycle, if you were just walking down the street with a baby stroller. They didn't care. Everybody was getting splashed, was getting wet. And um, they also took like baby powder, which was kind of symbolizing mud. They were just wiping it on everybody's face. It was supposed to symbolize blessings and abundance. And so as you're walking down the street, basically people just throwing water on you, spraying you with water guns, putting mud on your face. And this is just havoc happening everywhere. They stopping in the middle of the street, stopping cars, throwing water on the cars. People was in the in the back of trucks, and they were just in the back of trucks with big water buckets and bottles, and just throwing water off the truck to everybody on the street. It was mayhem, and I know that it, it's something that wouldn't work in America because um, people would be killed. People, people would probably go crazy on somebody. You wet up my new shirt or something or something like that. But um, it was pretty cool. So that's what I ended up doing for my birthday. Kind of extended it longer than I had expected. But yeah, that was a little my uh, first experience here in Thailand for the New Year's. So anyway, let's get into um, basically the purpose of even having this live is to talk about funding and finding funds. And um, me, myself, I'm someone who's looking for funds for projects as well as I'm someone who's looking for businesses, businesses to be able to invest in. And so it's okay if you're in both situations, that's fine. You wanna be able to expand your network with other people who are you know, of high net worth or other people who are looking for um, giving funds. So you always wanna have those in your circle so that you can be able to have unlimited funds as far as your ideas and your projects. You always have people that you've built a database of that are willing to give funds if you can present it in the right way and if it matches up with their um, lending goals. And then also you also want to have projects and um, you also want to be able to give your funds to other businesses. Now when it comes down to um, giving your funds to businesses and also to receiving funds, there's some laws that you really have to look up. You want to be able to have an attorney if you're doing any of this stuff. I'm not an attorney. That's a disclaimer. This is not any type of funding um, advice. This is just a conversation of all of us, what we can be doing. So definitely join in with the conversation if you have any insight or if you have any questions. But um, when it comes down to the laws of it, they've gotten stricter over the years. Um, and then also, I think one of the big things that's been happening in the market in general is brand new is cryptocurrencies. And um, cryptocurrencies has caused to me, even though the laws were already in, already in place, and the law started to happen after the, the real estate crash a little bit more than the stock market crash. They started to get a little bit more strenuous with the laws. But more recently with cryptocurrencies, what I've been finding is that the SEC have been going in to certain places that are accepting money. And um, if, you're not a, um, if you're not someone who's an accredited investor, so an accredited investor in the, in the United States, and I think it's just the United States that has this law, this doesn't happen in a lot of other places around the world, but the United States feels like in order for them to feel like you're a safe investor, you're somebody who can afford to invest. If you lose your money, it's not going to be very detrimental. They feel like they have to kind of handhold a little bit and supervise to make sure that you actually have the funds available to be able to invest. And so they feel like you have to actually be an accredited investor, which means I believe you have to make 250000 a year or more or you have to have a total net worth of a million dollars or more. And with those two criteria, they feel like at that point you're an accredited investor and you can, and now you're, you know, capable of investing your money in their eyes. If you make less than that, they feel like that you're not able to invest yet. You still have to kind of stack up your funds to be able to invest. And so that's how they feel, feel in the United States. And so if you were to accept money, let's say from um, someone who's not an accredited investor, you fall under, the um, lending laws and you're actually end up breaking the lending laws at that point. Now there's some um, things that just came into place that can get around that. So like crowdfunding and if you um, syndicate in a certain type of way, you definitely can still build money, but it's to the point where they kind of feel like you can't really advertise it. Like you got to kind of be your friends and families, some people you already know, you can't really advertise it in out there type of way. You're like, you got to advertise it in a certain way for folks to feel like, you know, it's not breaking the laws. And so what happened with cryptocurrencies is so many people have been, like the businesses, they either shut down the businesses, lock the people up that started the businesses. Like it's real serious crimes right now with anybody who's been accepting a whole bunch of money from different people that they don't know that's not accredited investors. And so, you know, with that being said, you definitely have to be able to get a lawyer 
be able to get an account and have those things in place to make sure whatever you're doing with your business, you know, that you're accepting funds in the right type of way. Either you're giving some type of stocks for the company or you're giving some type of, you know, some type of value to that company and not just, you know, accepting the money for nothing with no solid idea. And then also you want to make sure that the way that you're asking for funds is um, in law as far as the way you're asking people and the way you're promoting. So you can't really do that. So I just wanted to cover those things. Make sure you do your own research. Make sure you see what type of laws that you'll have to adhere to. So just want to cover those things first as far as you trying to um, accept money for your business. You want to make sure you do it in the right way. Um, when it comes down to you overcoming trust issues. So that was the next topic. So I think now this might this might be this might be specific to our community, you know, the people who I feel like I've grown up around, you know, um, my, um, as far as like our, our ethnic, ethnicity and things like that. I really feel like sometimes when it comes down to us giving and receiving money or even supporting each other, sometimes it comes down to us having a lot of trust issues. And it's trust on both sides because I feel like, I feel like we'll have this mentality that, you know, I don't have to prove myself to anybody but everybody has to prove their self to me. Now, when you have that type of mentality that you don't have to prove yourself to anybody, right? And it's okay to have that mentality, but you but at the same token when you say that everyone has to prove yourself prove their self to you, then it becomes unbalanced at that point. Like how can you really be able to tell someone like, "Hey, I want you to fund my business, but, you know, I don't want to prove myself to you for you to be able to fund it though." I don't want to tell you any of my ideas because I don't trust that you'll keep my ideas secret or that you'll actually not, you know, disclose some of the things that I'm saying to you and you might steal my idea. And so it's like a two-sided cord. Yeah, yeah, Keith's like really poverty mentality. It's like a two-sided coin. Like we're saying that we want help. We're saying that we want, you know, someone to be able to trust us enough to be able to give us funds just off the fact of who we are and what our idea is. But at the same time, we have a trust issue in sharing that idea or we have a trust issue when it comes down to proving yourself to that person, you know? And so when we go approach people, we really go approach them sometimes and we're like, you know, hey, I have this idea, will you fund it? And it's just like, oh, okay, what's the idea? And it's like, oh, uh, you know, it's, it's this type of idea. And you don't want to say it all. You don't even want to tell them details. You don't have any type of materials that they can actually go through thoroughly. You just kind of go off of that sometimes. And I feel like we, even though we feel like um, other people should believe us, other people should see our vision, it's not really their job to see the vision. It's just it's your job to sell the vision to them, to be able to create the vision in a clear way where they can understand it and not only understand it, align with it. And so that person has to actually align with your vision. They have to see it enough to believe it. And then they also have to feel like it actually happened. And you have to show that on paper, some type of proof. Like you have to prove yourself when it comes down to this. You say, give me your money, but mind your business. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. No, really, like that's really how we think. And I, you know, I'm subject to do that too, where it's just like, oh, I have this idea, but I don't want to share this idea yet. I don't have it already ready, or I don't have it already done. And it and it is a phase. Like, you know, I really feel like before you ask for money, you should have already bootstrapped. And bootstrapped is where you've went to the furthest, you've already hit the wall already. Like you've already invested all of your money into it. You already put your house up you know, for collateral in order to get your business done. You already told your kids that, you know, we can't eat like we used to eat at the restaurants. Like we got to be able to scramble and eat some oodles and noodles for the next three years. You have to already have been to the point where you've already sold whatever your product or service is out of the trunk of your car without any marketing dollars. And you've already went and just put the energy and the time into, you know, into your, your service or your product that you're selling. And once people see that, it's funny because once people see that you've already hit the wall or that you've already had results, like, you know, you can go with numbers. Like I've already done this amount of sales myself. I've already built this type of database on my own. This company is already producing this amount per month. I just need this amount to be able to get this far. I've already proven that it can make this amount. If I just receive this, then I know that I can expand and make this. That's something that's really, really solid. That's something that someone can invest in because you've already proven that you have a track record. You've already proven that it can be done. And so sometimes it is hard to be able to get that first movement, but you have to be able to bootstrap first when it comes down to asking for money from anybody because um, 
Folks need to be able to see that proof. And the proof is in the pudding. Like, that's the people that's going to get the money the fastest. Now, if you have an idea and you formulate it in the right type of way, and you haven't actually went and, um, and tried to do it yet, you can still receive funds if you can put it in the right way. But the people that are going to receive the funds the fastest is the people that already have um, proven results for it. And that's you going out there and actually just making it happen and showing that you have the proof in the pudding. And then also put it on paper like, hey, if it's bringing in 50000 a month, if I receive $1 million, I know I can take this company up to a million a month. If I get the company to a million a month, the million dollars that you gave me, not only am I going to be able to give that million back, I'm going to give you 20% of the royalties that we make of the million every single month. And so whatever your idea is, it doesn't matter what it is. If it can fit those numbers where the investor is like, hey, you know, those sound pretty good as far as the return on investment to me. And it's a secure deal, meaning that you have already have a proven track record on what you're doing. Or even if you don't have the personal track record, even if you've shown that there's someone else in the market that has a similar track record that's already proven it to be done. It's something they can see with their own eyes. It's already been built. It's already success successful. You can even use somebody else's success to be able to sell the fact that you can replicate that, that you can do it. And these take a lot of details. It takes a lot of time to be able to build this report to be able to have that security for the person. But I'm gonna give you some resources that you can, um, you know, go and read and things like that to be able to really start formulating your marketing materials so that you can just prove your results and then you'll, you know, you can start getting money a little bit easier. And so um, the, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna put a couple of them inside of the. Uh, comment box. So there's one book that I like is called is at capitalraising.com. So as we have these discussions, I want to be able to have you guys go right out and be able to take some type of action after. So it's not just us having a conversation just to talk. It's actually us having a conversation to be able to by the end of the week took a step towards whatever dream that you have. And so capitalraising.com is a really cool one that I like from um, it's a company that they actually specialize in um, raising capital as a fund, and they all they um, they have something called family offices. So they've niched down, and they suggest that you actually find a niche of people that you can service. Because depending on what you have and what you're offering, there's investors out there who are looking for those specific type of businesses. And so if you can niche down and find out what type of services can you provide for them or what type of pains can you um, alleviate for them, then a lot of times they're able to, you're, you're able to find that group, that specific group that you can go and target and you can start getting funding from that group easily than you could say, you know, other type of groups. And so you have high network individuals, people who are accredited investors that you can go after individually, but then you also have like pension funds and you also have hedge funds and you have private equity funds and it's all types of like corporations that you can go after too. And then you have also that type of individual, the high network individuals, you can go in and even niche closer into them. And so you have entrepreneurs that are high network indiv individuals, you have doctors that are high network individuals, you have, you know, all types of other type of subcategories um, that you can actually just single out and say, hey, I'm only going to go after these type of people because I feel like these type of people will see my vision more. Or these type of people will align with what I'm, what I'm trying to do and they'll be able to give you funding a little bit more. And then you also will know those type of people a little bit more so you can speak their language a little bit more. You can provide some of their um, solutions or you know to their pains that they may be, may be finding with um, investing into other companies. And so you definitely want to be able to do that um, when it comes down to it. And... Um, if you if well the people that are on here if you're looking for funding for your business be able to put that into the comments so we can talk about that a little bit too like whatever business that you're looking for funding for or if you're looking to fund businesses what type of businesses would you be most interested in funding right now and those can change over time and so i know right now me and my wife if we found someone who's into the cannabis industry because they'll be felt we kind of see where that's going then we would be very interested in sitting down with somebody who's you know doing that right now we don't have the total time that it takes to be able to build a company in that industry right now from scratch. But if somebody has the idea, they have the, the want, they've already started doing the groundwork and the bootstrapping, we would be very interested in partnering with those folks and to be able to invest in, in that type of business. And so that's the example of just being able to know what it is right now that you're looking for and that you want. And then, um, finding the right people that, that aligns with that. So that's one of the industries that we're looking into. Also, when it comes down to real estate, where our ears are always open when it comes down to real estate projects and things that make sense, the numbers make sense. And, you know, depending on what we need, we're always interested in that. And so as a group, 
eventually long term with this group, we want to be able to pull our resources resources together on a, a huge major project that's very secure. You know, we can put all our money together and it's almost like zero risk and we have a big um, probability for success when we all can work together. So that's kind of the long term. But just for now, you know, we want to be able to get an idea of what people are looking for funding for and then also what people are interested in funding so that way we can start matching these things up and start seeing as a whole, like, okay, this industry seems like it's something that we can really jump into and there's, you know, clear room for us to be able to have success and we can have those conversations. So I just want to open the door for us to be able to have more open conversations about this stuff. Um, oh, the three part, the three part analysis. So in, in this capital and there's another resource too, that I feel like I'm going to share my help people, but it's called private. Okay. And there's some other resources out there for um, learning how to be a private lender or learning how to receive private money. And um, these are two resources that I felt like were the best so far for me that I've learned a lot from as far as starting to build this from scratch, but then how fast and quickly can you build it and, you know, automate it as possible using the technology. And those are, you know, really what I'm about to be able to automate things, be able to get to the goal quick as possible, and then to be able to provide freedom for myself and freedom for my family and, and long-term wealth. And so when it comes down to learning how to be a private lender and also receiving private money, it really kind of makes you endless on the type of ideas you can, you can create and you can bring to fruition because you can receive any type of money that you want for your ideas, but as well as you can give your money to all different types of ideas without you having to put in your 100% work into doing everything yourself. And so that's the fastest way for you to be able to get to that point. But again, these are certain things that you want to do at a certain phase in your life too. You know, you may have to start at the personal development or real estate or trading currencies and then having the funds and the means to be able to risk your money into investing into businesses. Or if it comes down to this is your own business, you'll have to do a lot, a lot of, a whole lot of work in building those things to be able to prove to investor that you're ready to go forward. And so the big three things I feel like out of these two resources that I found was there's three analysts that you want to do as someone who's looking to receive money or as someone that's looking to lend money. These three things you want to focus on, and there's a lot of things that go into these you know, categories as far as like subcategories and things like that. But the three biggest categories is one, analyzing your competition. And so when it comes down to analyzing your competition, you want to be able to know their weaknesses, know their strengths, and then also know your unique position. And if you know your, if you know your competition's strengths, you want to make sure that you have all of those things or as many of those things as well checked on your list. And when you know there are weaknesses, you want to be able to have as many of those things on your list as well. And then also you want to have something unique out of those things. And that's something unique can be maybe a weakness that the rest of the industry has that you solved. You know, and if you have something like that, then that can separate you from, you know, if an investor is looking to invest, then there's all types of investments that's out there that's probably in your same niche, your same industry that they can invest in. And so you'll have to separate yourself and show why is it that you're different? Why is it that you can be more successful? Why is it that they feel like they can align with you and not someone else? And so if you can find a weakness that the industry has as a whole, like if you see everybody's complaining about this or everybody wish they had this, whatever that is, if you can work that into your unique position and use that as your story when you're selling people, then that'll be able to separate you. So you'll talk about the strengths of your competition, the weaknesses. You'll dive really deep in to see exactly how you can fit yourself in the market and where. And then you want to sell that point as far as you um, being able to receive whatever market share because of that. When it comes down to the second one, um, analyzing your investors' needs. If you are the investor, you want to be able to analyze your own needs. Analyze how much return on investment that you want out of the project, how fast you want it. Are you willing to lend your money for a year or you want to lend your money for five years? You know, are you willing to um, take 20 percent or are you looking for something that you need at least 40 percent? inside of the business? Is there certain industries that you gravitate towards because of either your passion or because of the success or because of the, the progress? You know, it's something that's an industry that's very progressive. You can see it on the rise. It's not there yet. And you want to jump in there first. Those are some of the things as an investor you want to start analyzing for yourself. What are the industries? How much money? What are the, the time limits? How much would you like to be able to get in return? And even as an investor, it's funny because there are some people that I partner with on companies that I haven't necessarily invested a whole bunch of money, 
you know, I've invested some money, but more so I've taken some control and invested a lot of my time and my expertise. And we've been able to, to, you know, be able to combine forces because I have certain expertise and that person has certain expertise. We can b combine our energy, but we partner on business where we can also split percentages. And so that's something that you can have that comes in over and over and over again, because it's someone else's business, it's someone else's passion, but you have a certain expertise that you can go and partner with that person. And y'all can split either split some of the costs or you can just use your expertise by itself and be able to build that business. But you have to know what are the type of businesses that you would like to build and the industries and in, that you would like to build and also what security would, would you like in order for you to feel like that you can actually do this. Because um, if you give, if you're really just willing to give to anything, you'll find yourself stretched thin, you know, or if you don't have a criteria that you're looking for, you'll never pull the trigger on investing in anybody because of, of, again, that trust issue. You know, if it comes down to it and you don't know what you want, when people come and present to you a project, you don't even know what you want. And so you'll never pull the trigger. When you know what you want, that's when you feel like, okay, as soon as I find that, I know it's hard to find. It's like a needle in the haystack. But when I find it, I'm gonna just run towards it and we're gonna go and push and we're gonna push the lever and we're gonna make this thing go to the moon. But otherwise, you know, it's hard for you to be able to line that up. And so if you're not the investor yourself, you wanna be able to know your investor like the back of your hand. So you want to know what it is that they're looking for. What are the problems that they said they have in the market? What type of return they're usually looking for? How long are they willing to lend their money? You want to know these things. And then you also want to be able to talk their language when you get in front of them. And so let's say, for example, I'm looking for, you know, money for my um, investment project. I'm looking to build a, a, a I'm, I'm actually looking to develop a project, which is true. I'm looking to develop a project right now. But let's say, for example, I wanted to go after a specific niche of people which would be, you know, landlords, people who already understand buy and hold, they already understand real estate, and I know that they have capital already to the side or they're ready to invest into real estate because they're looking for more buy and hold properties. And so if I just targeted just that new uh, uh, niche of people, that means I'm not looking for, you know, family members that asking everybody I know for family. I'm not, you know, trying to go out, uh, uh, go sink um, and actually, crowdsource to regular mom and pops out there. I'm not going to go look for hedge funds and private equity funds to be able to go and present my product. I'm going to look for a specific group. So let's say landlords. I'm just going to go after landlords. And so that means I can go, I can go on LinkedIn. There is like a hundred, I think out of my stretch, I'm like connected to over a hundred thousand landlords just out of my connection. And so if I'm going to just go after landlords, I can literally go on LinkedIn, send all of the landlords that I know a message and start build, building conversations from there and seeing where their goals are. What, what are they looking for as far as investments and buy and hold is concerned? Where, they're, where are their portfolios at now? Where do they wanna go with their portfolios? And then seeing if we actually align with what I'm trying to do as far as my new development is concerned. And so if they're interested in going forward and buying more buying holes, I'm like, hey, if I'm building a new development in their condos or their apartments, maybe this is something that you can actually go forward and invest in. And so they, it might really trigger with them as far as my project is concerned, if I can actually speak to them in their language, if I know what they're looking for, know their goals. And so definitely an analyze your investors' needs so that way you can present the project to them as this, if, as this is a solution to them and not as, this, as if it's, a, it's just an idea that you came up with. And so definitely um, do that. And then the last one is analyzing yourself and your business. And that's probably some of the longest, that's going to take some of the longest time. And that's really going to take some strong looking in the mirror to be able to tell, you know, how do you really compare with the competition? And you have to be real with yourself, you know, everything about your business and about yourself, how do you really stand against the competition? And you have to be able to put those things down, but then also have a plan on how you can get yourself to their level. And so if you can take a hard look and say, okay, you know, when it comes down to my, um, my branding, you know, their branding, they spent, you know, $500,000 on a whole branding team and they have all types of sparkly logos and letterheads and, you know, big street signs and all of this stuff as far as their branding is concerned. And your branding, you just bought something off of Fiverr.com and had somebody make a quick logo for you or Upworks and you only pay, you know, $20, $50 for your logo and for your business ideas. It's like, you know, where do you really stand when it comes down to you having your product or your service standing side by side with your direct competition? And if it's something that you need work on, just put that into the plan. Like, hey, I started off with a $20, $20 logo. 
But if I can receive funding for you for $500,000, I'll be able to be able to stand against their logo by simply doing X, Y, and Z. And that way I can put myself side by side with them if you have it in your plan. So whatever it is that's a weakness to you, you can still have it in your plan where you have a solution to that weakness when you receive the funding. And so people can really see you go from where you are to where you're trying to go. And it makes perfect sense to them because now they see, okay, when I do give you the money, where is it going to be allocated to? And when it's allocated, get it to the right places is it going to put you in a position in the market where you can actually compete at that point point? and so you have to prove these things on paper and so there's um, a few different things that I feel like um, as far as having your marketing materials you definitely want to be able to have a 60 second pitch and so that's something that you can say in 60 seconds if you just meet someone or you meet the right person in your market that's an investor that may be interested you want to be able to say in 60 seconds to them real fast because people with money they really don't have a lot of time sometimes and or they really value their time not even have a lot of time they value their time more than a lot of other folks and so when it comes down to getting their attention you be able to you have to do it really really quickly something that'll pique their attention and so find something in 60 seconds that you can say somebody that'll pique their interest enough like okay tell me more you know and, and that's something that you know is going to be a weapon for you if you can do that and may take, take a little bit of time in practice you also want to be able to have your team bios already done and so you want to have a bio of everybody that's in your team if that's just you you want to be able to have a nice bio talking about your past and your expertise and your skills and things that you bring to the table but you really want to be able to find a team if you're serious about doing this and be able to sell your vision to other folks to be able to start from at least the people the core people that you have use you, your skills together and then you know go out and ask for funding from there so i would recommend you have a team um you know at least one two three other people um that you can actually fall back on you guys can do it together before you go and ask for funding for somebody that's just my opinion i mean a lot of them are looking for somebody who has a board you know who have people that have expertise already in a certain field and so that's just something that i would recommend you go do but have a bio of everybody's skills um, of what they can do well and what they bring to the table and show the balance, you know, as far as you actually achieving or already ach you've already achieved what they're looking for or you have the skills to be able to achieve what they're looking for. You want to be able to have a pitch book. And the pitch book is really just a PowerPoint presentation. And so you want to be able to have a quick PowerPoint presentation. So this isn't, we're not talking about a business plan. This isn't like a 30 page, uh, you know, my first business plan that I made for my very first company was literally 30 pages. I paid somebody $700 to help me put this together. It took me six months to build this business plan. And then, you know, nobody wanted to read it after I put all that time and money together. And so a pitch book is, um, just a PowerPoint presentation. It can be, you know, as long or as short as you want it to be, but you want to have key things in there about your business, about the competition, and about the projections that you're offering for the business to be able to make and then also the return for the investor. You want to be able to fit all of that into a nice little presentation on a PowerPoint, or you can make that PowerPoint a PDF, um, but you want to be able to make it so concise that it's quick for someone to read, but then also they can see the benefits of, you know, what your business is bringing to the marketplace and how you're unique and what you bring as far as your um, security of making it in the market. And so it's like you, it's kind of weird about the uniqueness. It's like you want to be able to have it where it's not so unique, where it has never been done before, where it's going to be totally innovative, where people don't really see the vision. But you also want to have it to the point where you separate yourself from the competition. And so you want to be able to use a model that has already worked. You know, people already can see it with their eyes like, oh, this is another example of something that they've already done. So you can probably make it work, too. But you want to be able to use something else that's like, you know, they made it work, but I can make it work better in this way. Or I can um, solve this problem that they're having by me starting it. So, you know, have that in your pitch book. Um, and these things are in the, mark, in the materials that I gave you as far as reading materials on how to do these things. And then also you want to have a one-page paper. And so outside of the pitch book, maybe somebody doesn't have time or doesn't have the technology to be able to look at that right now. Have a one-page paper that actually goes through the, um, the most important things about what you're trying to sell over to that person. Just have it quickly on one page. That will be real useful for you. And then um, they also suggest that you either become an authority and write a book in that niche or have a thorough white paper and a white paper is um it's basically a little bit longer of um it's longer than a pitch deck but it's not as 
thorough as a business plan. It's more so like a, almost like a proposal. If you think about white paper like that. Um, so it's like you either have a book where it shows that you're an authority and you're teaching a certain subject where you're sharing about certain ideas in a certain industry. And that way that helps you to become an authority real fast and people are more trustworthy of you. Or you have a white paper that breaks a lot of those things down and they can see it thoroughly. And if they want to dive in deeper to what you have to offer, you'll be able to have that white paper for them to really dive deep in what you're offering them and what your business is offering. And so those are the three valuable things that I feel like um, with a three part analysis that I feel like you should really dive deeply into focusing on to try to make this as simple as possible. If you focus in those three areas, as far as you're analyzing your competition, analyzing your investor needs, and then analyzing yourself and your business, and then just dive deep into those subcategories, you'll be able to figure out whether or not you can really start getting funding for your business. And then also, you know, the big thing I feel like I want to leave you with is to be able to bootstrap. You know, start right now on whatever it is that you're trying to sell, whatever it is. Just start right now on the resources that you currently have and go to the max. Already hit the wall as far as you invest in your time, your money, your energy into your project. You have to show that, you know, show that first. There's so many times I think I've run into people that where they have a great idea, but it's just simply an idea. And then also I see that you're not willing to invest your own money into doing it or you haven't gotten to the point where you've sacrificed something a great deal of your own. And so it's kind of iffy for me to sacrifice something of a great deal of my own when you haven't done it yourself yet, or you haven't put the time in there at all. And so you can be out there really selling out of the truck of your car, whatever product that you have. I feel like you should have numbers. You should already be coming to me like, hey, I have, you know, I have bought 20,000 of these. I sold 20,000 of these out in, you know, two weeks. And I made this amount from that product. Just imagine if I bought 100,000 of these and put it in front of that same market, I'll be able to make this amount. You know, those things are, are very necessary. So you already have to put in that work to be able to provide your own numbers. You know, be able to build your database first of, of customers and, and, you know, your work. So that's definitely something I want to leave you with with that. Otherwise, guys, I'm going to be able to do another live uh, sooner, probably on Tuesday, where we're talking about personal development. And, um, and then every week after that. And I'm going to start putting in some more videos outside of the lives that we're doing. Just some videos on things that I found that I've, that I've been doing, either you know, real estate, personal development, trading currencies, you know, investing into businesses. As I go along, I'm going to just you know, share more and more things and um, divvy out my time more. And that's all I want to do with this group is just, I just want to share, build conversation, give information. And the more lessons that we have inside of the unit section, when people come and join the group, they'll be able to just jump right along. Or when you're ready to switch and go into another investment strategy, you can just jump right in and say, hey, I'm ready to get into trading currencies now. Let me go check out some of these be beginner videos, check out some of the resources. You can just jump right in. And so I'm going to be able to provide that to more people. Other than that, guys, if you have any questions, let me know. You can also comment, oh, is the private money on demand, the meat of the info without the fluff? Does it, oh, does it get right to the point so I can get started right away? The private money on demand is definitely um, – provides a whole lot of resources that actually gives you a PowerPoint. It already gives you a pitch deck that you can use. Um, it already gives you, um, it shows you how to set up your 60 second pitch. It gives you examples on that. That is really the meat of giving you examples of how you can just copy and paste and, and formulate your stuff. The other one that I suggested the capital raising.com that gives you the mind frame on where to start with. So that gives you how to, you know, how to really dive in into your research and, and to your company and to, um, you know, your, your investors needs and then also who you're going to go after as far as your investors is concerned and how to talk to them and how to speak to them and how to just start things off. So I would definitely recommend starting with the capital dot com. It's a really short ebook. It's free. That doesn't cost any money for their ebook. So, you know, you don't have to spend any money and you can see that you can really see how you can position yourself first. And then go and get the private um, money on demand, which is only a couple dollars. I can't remember how much it was that I paid for it, but it's only a couple dollars for that one. But that actually gives you the example. Like once you're ready, you have everything formulated in your head and the mentality, you can use the private money on demand to be able to take what they have and formulate their, their already marketing materials. And then he also goes deep into a lot of other things too. And you can start now actually building your, um, building your, um, your actual materials from that. So yeah, so that's what I would definitely recommend, Keish. Um, ownership and control, absolutely. Absolutely, ownership and control is what it's about. Even if you don't own it, if you can control it, that's how I made it in real estate. That was the first time I've learned about you know control without ownership. 
And you can do the same thing in business where you can control a lot of the business without you actually owning it. If you can invest in that business and invest in somebody's idea and somebody else's work, and you can just have some control over that. Or you can be, you know, you can be a silent investor too. But me, I would rather be active right now, especially at this part of my life. I would just have, I would like to have some control over it as far as where it go, you know, I'll, I'll get my hands dirty, get my feet dirty right now because I have the energy and the time to do it. But eventually it starts to build on its own where you don't, you don't have to even put any time and energy into it. You just know what to look for. You just know exactly where the market and where the economy is going. And you can just start like the more you learn this stuff, everything as a whole, I mean, real estate, trading currencies, investing in the businesses. It's funny how it really goes hand in hand. It all works each other. It works with each other. When you learn one, you actually start learning a lot of the skills in the other one, just learning cycles and, you know, buyers and, and sellers and, and when the market starts to, um, to where it's going and things like that and started to predict the market. It's funny how those things go hand in hand. So definitely guys um, put some more comments in there as far as the businesses that you're looking for funding for and type of businesses that you're looking to fund. Even if this live is over, you definitely still want to be able to engage and figure out what you need and see if we can provide some help for folks. All right. Other than that, I'm going to get back to what I'm doing this morning, just getting my day started, and I hope you have a great night. All right, peace.